Our reading this morning comes from Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon. From the prison, those who sit in the darkness, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. And our second reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. So, just imagine that I am John and you are the crowd by the River Jordan. I want to tell you something of my story. You know... I believe God had a very special part for me. My parents, you know who they were, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were very godly people and spent lots of time in and around the temple. But they had one very, very big sorrow. They were very old and they didn't have any children. It was a big sorrow, as I said, for them. But one day, Dad, Zechariah, was carrying out his duties in the temple and it was his turn to go into the Holy of Holies to burn the incense. And while he was in there, something remarkable happened. An angel spoke to him, you know, a messenger from God. And as Dad tells it, the angel said to him, that he and Elizabeth would have a child and they had to name him John. Well, Dad tells me he scratched his head and said, oh, <coughs> that's rubbish. Elizabeth's far too old. And Dad was struck dumb. And people couldn't understand what had happened. But then, in due course, in due time, I was born. And then when it was time to go to the temple for me to be circumcised and those things that had to happen, we went into the temple and the, all the relatives wanted Dad to call me Zechariah after him and he said, no, 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 he said, his name must be John. And so... I'm John. Here I am standing before you today. And you know what? When 
Dad said that I would be called John. He was able to speak again and how happy he was. Mum and Dad told me this story time and time again. So as I grew up, I knew that God had a special purpose for me. I listened to the scriptures. I went to the temple. I grew up knowing that I had a special place. And I, in my younger days, I lived very simply. Matthew and Luke tell me that uh, I ate locusts. And uh, it wasn't very good. And I had a, a coat of hamel, uh, camel's hair. Many years ago, the prophet Isaiah had written, Someone is shouting in the desert, Prepare a road for the Lord. Make straight a path for him to follow. And I very humbly believe that God has chosen me to be that person, to prepare the way for the one who is to come. Our nation for generations has looked forward to the coming of the Messiah. The prophets foretold it. And I believe the time is now very clear, very near. The time is coming for the Messiah. I've been proclaiming this around Jerusalem and around Judea and many people have come and have been baptised. And many people have asked, well, what do we have to do then? And I've said to them, whoever has two shirts must give one to who has none. Whoever has food must share it. And to the tax collectors I've said, don't collect more than what you are due. And to the soldiers, don't take money from anyone by force and accuse anyone falsely. Be content with your pay. And many people's lives were changed. I was critical of some of the church or some of the temple and synagogue people, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They seemed to be going about their religious duties but they didn't care much about the people. And then, and then, Jesus came. Jesus, my cousin. I knew straight away he was greater than I. And yet, he said that he had to be baptised. He insisted that I baptise him. And so I agreed. I baptised Jesus there at the River Jordan. And then a great thing, a spirit from God descended like a dove upon him. And we heard the voice, This is my own dear son, with whom I am pleased. God had chosen me to prepare the way. And now he had come, the one whom is God's son, the chosen one, the Christ, the Messiah. And after 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus then began his ministry. I'm so privileged to have been part of his preparation. And you know, because I've, ch I've challenged King Herod about some of the rotten things he's done, I don't think I'll be around much longer. Live out your own baptism. Probably most of us were baptised when we were infants or children. Some have been baptised as teenagers, even later in life. And I'm sure you will remember your baptism. But most of us, probably all of us, have been involved in the baptism of our own children, our own grandchildren. How much do we appreciate the fact that we are baptised? We are God's children. Live out your baptism every day.